Well, this is the final block in the 2022 Christmas Quilt Along series, and this week we make a gift box. There is a reason why I chose to do this block last. If you're like me, during the past four blocks you've created scraps, strings, and crumbs. Well, now's the time to take all of that out because in this block we go totally scrappy to try and use up as much of the extra pieces as we can. Let's get started. Whenever doing any quilting project, there are always pieces that get scrapped or not used. If you're a frugal quilter like me, you keep even the smallest of pieces. I try not to accumulate too many of these scrap pieces and try to use them up. I also try not to cut more fabric than I need, but no matter how careful I am, there are always bits and pieces left over, and this project was no exception. So I decided that in this final block, I'll use up as much scratch pieces as I can to make the blocks. So this video will be slightly different than past videos in this series. You won't get different methods of creating the block, but instead, you'll get different layouts. And when you switch up the composition of the block, that is where you can get the variety of different looks. Let's start with our first layout and I'll explain a little more. So with the previous blocks, I've given you different methods in terms of how to construct the block. In this week, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna give you different layouts to this block. And you can decide whether or not you wanna use solid pieces or you can scrap it up. The choice will be yours. Here's what I mean. Take a look at the pieces for this, what I'm calling the cross ribbon method or cross ribbon layout, I should say. Well, let's start with the top here. These are two and a half inch background squares, and then you got your two and a half by four and a half inch flying geese unit that we've pretty much seen in almost every single block that we've done. But these four pieces here, these measure four inches by three inches. And these strips here, well, they're one and a half inches wide, but this is a three inch piece or three inches long, and this is eight and a half inches long. So here's where the variety can kind of come in. You don't necessarily have to use solid pieces of fabric here. This is where you can scrap it up. Now, in some of the blocks, and you'll see this throughout the video, I actually took these, these this is made actually from the cutoffs. You know, when you do a flying geese unit like this, you cut off the back. Well, that's what this is. And so I started playing around with these and just made half square triangles out of them. And you'll see me actually substitute pieces like this for these solid pieces here. You'll see me do a few crumb pieces. You'll see me do, I think there's a block that I actually incorporated in here. But the basic layout didn't change. So let's put this block together. To put this block together is no different than sewing any other quilt block. You'll sew the individual pieces into rows, then sew the rows to each other. Press the seam allowances open or to the side, whichever you prefer. If you need help constructing your flying geese units, you can watch the video for block number one, where we explored various methods of making flying geese units, or watch the replay of the live session when I demonstrated those various methods. I'll leave links to those videos in the description box below. But now, let's start sewing some scraps to make our three by four inch units. In order to make the three inch by four inch unit using a five inch charm square, I had to trim it down to size. Now those strips that I cut off, I didn't throw them away. Instead, I sewed them together to make a mini strip set. And when that strip set was large enough, I trimmed it to the size that I needed and used it in a different block. And that is what I mean by changing the composition of the block to get the variety. Instead of using just solid pieces of fabric, sew together smaller bits and pieces until you get a larger unit to the size you need. 
and use that instead. As many of you are beginning quilters, this is what is known as scrap or crumb quilting when you take different pieces of fabric and sew them together. The pieces can be different shapes or sizes, or they could just be strips of different widths, and the look of the block will often be very, very interesting. So let's have a look at our cross ribbon, or sometimes I call this the dual ribbon layout. So to me, this looks like a gift box, like it's a wrapped present. You know, you typically have the ribbon going one way and then going the opposite way. Notice that I didn't use all of the same fabric. Well, these two polka dot fabrics kind of look similar. I didn't use all the same fabric, number one, because I didn't actually have enough fabric of the same in this charm pack. This block, very, very pre-cut friendly. You can basically use, you can use a charm pack, you can use 10 inch square. Um, you can't use a jelly roll unless, well, unless you scrap it up. So let's take a look at some of the other varieties that I did. Here's another one where I actually used whole print squares. Again, going in a green colorway. But take a look at this. Now, these were actually scraps. I just trimmed them down to one and a half inches and sewed them into strip sets here, here and here. Now, I didn't have quite enough to actually make a full block out of it, so I did have one extra square where it was just a solid fabric there. So be creative with this block. I mean, you don't have to use solid fabrics like how I did here, as well as here, scrap it up. Be as creative as you want to. Maybe if you're a crumb quilter, or if you like crumb piecing, this is the way to go. Or this is the block to actually do that. You can make a strip set, you can sew crumbs together. What about those cutoffs that you did for when you did like your flying geese unit, or maybe you snowballed the corner? Maybe you can use those cutoff triangles. Be creative, think outside the box. You don't have to go with just a plain solid fabric. You can do something totally outside the box. So now let's make a gift box with just one ribbon going right down the center. So in this case, I'm just gonna put this gray strip down here and that'll be my ribbon. And that's just gonna go right down the center here. So this strip is two and a half inches by six and a half inches logs. Now you could do a one and a half inch wide strip. That choice will be up to you. These side units are three and a half inches by six and a half inches. Now, if you do a one and a half inch strip down the middle, your side units will then have to be four inches wide on each side. I thought that the block looked better with the wider strip, so I'm going with the two and a half inch strip here. You can do a one and a half, basically, you can basically do any size strip that you want to. I'm just going with the two and a half. Now for the top, you have your two and a half by four and a half inch flying geese unit and the two and a half inch squares on both sides here. As you can kind of see, I already sewed my top on. Well, this is actually kind of a leftover piece from another block that I was trying. So I'm going to use it. So let's get this block sewn together. I think I'm in love with that silver and black point center print. I just love how the blocks look with that print. Now, just like any other block, you'll sew the pieces into rows then sew the rows together and press your seam allowances whichever way you desire. What you'll also see me doing in between sewing all the different pieces is sewing crumbs and scraps together. I found that with this particular layout, crumb pieces and scraps look really good. Well, that's my opinion on it, but let's have a look. I think I had the most fun trying to do this particular layout. Now this layout actually lends itself really well to making a print fabric really shine. So you see here, I got this poinsettia, which I, I kind of like it. Depending upon how you construct this block, this particular method can be very 
uh, pre-cut friendly or it might not be. If you are looking at a focus fabric like this, of course, you can get up, you can probably do it with a 10 inch square, but definitely not with a charm pack. However, if you're going to use a charm pack, you can scrap it up. Let's take a look at some of the other varieties that I did. So here I had a bunch of scraps left over from all the charm packs that I've been kind of trimming down and cutting up. So I sewed those crumbs or those scraps together and actually came up with this block. I kind of like this block because it's very busy. And when you look at certain gift wrapping paper, yeah, it's very busy because there's a lot going on with the prints. Now for some people, crumb blocks are not their thing. So I can kind of understand that this might not be appealing to everybody, but if you are a crumb quilter, hey, this is what you can do. Here's another version. Now with the other quilt top, remember I am making two quilt tops here. With the other one, I did the same thing, but I had a lot more random pieces here. Now this version, I used a strip set here. These were two and a half inch strips. And so I sewed three of them together that made the six and a half inch length that I needed. Now in terms of the width, remember that on some of these other blocks, I used a two and a half inch strip for this middle ribbon here. These here, these are actually the cutoffs of all the snowballs and all the flying geese units that I made over this whole series. And I kept those units and I just made a one and a half inch half square triangle unit here. And I just sewed up one, two, three, four, five, five of them together. And it was long and it well, actually it was a little too long. So I had to notice I did trim it, cut it short there, but this ends up being a one and a half inch strip. And so because it was one and a half inches here, I had to make my side units here four inches. The original measurement that I did with the two and a half inch strip here was this was two and a half inches wide. So this needed to be three and a half inches wide because this is a one and a half inch strip. These had to be four inches wide. Play around with the dimensions. I mean, you can basically make it as thin as you want or as thick as you want. Now, the thicker you go or the thinner you go, you have to adjust the side units there. So with this layout, I'm gonna call this the um, hmm, lower box layout. See, gifts come in all different shapes and sizes, so I figure I might as well make them different sizes too. So with this layout, I do have a two and a half by eight and a half inch background strip here, and I still got my flying geese unit, which is two and a half by four and a half inches, and my two two and a half inch squares of a background fabric. These pieces here are four inches by four and a half. This middle strip, it's a one and a half by four, in, four and a half inch long strip. It'll give the block a little bit of a different look because you got different sizes here. But again, you don't have to use solid fabrics here. You can scrap it up and just do some variations to it. So be creative with this, but let's get this block sewn. Of all the layouts, I think this is the most unusual one and perhaps the weirdest looking one. I like that it has a different look and size. And as you'll see, you can easily incorporate a smaller block into the layout, but choose that block wisely because it can actually draw unnecessary attention. And like all other quilt blocks, sew your pieces together into rows, then sew your rows together. Press the seam allowances in whichever direction you desire. Now I sound like a broken record repeating that, but isn't that what we do in quilting? A lot of it is repetitive, so it's good to throw in some variety. Speaking of variety, let's have a look at what varieties I came up with on this layout. Gift boxes come in all different heights and sizes. So the idea behind this particular block was to actually make a gift box that was a little bit shorter, just to give your quilt a little bit more variety. You can do this with any, pretty much any pre-cut. Now with this particular block, 
All of these half square triangle units, these were actually the cutaway triangles from when we did things like this uh, snowball corner or when we made the flying geese units. Yeah, I saved those triangles and actually made half square triangle blocks out of them. And I sewed them together and put them in this block. Did the same thing with this particular block, but these particular half square triangles, they didn't quite measure up. To make it fit this block, I actually had to sew a couple of strips just to build it. I kind of like the scrappiness of these two particular blocks. I mean, you know me, I like scrappy. I'm not so flattered about how the actual block or the design of it came out, but I wanted to use up my scraps. I wanted to make it scrappy. I wanted to use all the crumb pieces and make sure that, well, I'm not leaving any scrap behind. So I do like the fact that I was able to use all of those scraps and make crumbs or use all those crumbs and triangles in this these particular blocks. I would encourage all of you to think outside the box. Again, you don't necessarily have to use one solid piece of fabric. Use up your crumbs, use up those cutaway triangles maybe you've been saving up. These are blocks where it will lend itself very, very nicely to use up those crumbs and scraps. Scrap it up, that's what I say. <laughs> Be creative with it, have fun with it. If this is really taking you outside of your comfort level, hey, give it a try. Worst case scenario, you end up not liking the block, you can toss it and make another one. Or use a candy block. Remember that one? That's what it's for. Green tea and coconut milk. That's my elixir for this video. You know, I haven't had an elixir on a video for quite some time. Hmm. I was trying to make the Starbucks green tea frappuccino. Yeah, you don't realize how much sugar they actually put in that drink until you try this. It's not horrible, but it's not the Starbucks green tea frappuccino, that's for sure. But I kind of like this. Hmm. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was block three when we did the stocking. Anyway, I posed the question, are you a scrap quilter? Do you like to do strings? Do you like to sew crumbs together? And there was quite a bit of people that said, yes, they do collect those crumbs. They like to do strings. They like scraps, but they don't always know what to do with them. And so I kind of thought, well, maybe we can do a project together. Well, that maybe is now going to be a reality. At the end of any project or at the end of any quilt along, I always get the question, well, what's the next quilt along? Take a look at this preview here. Yeah, I was cleaning up my quilting space and guess what? A whole ton of crumb pieces just fell right on me. Yeah, time to make a crumb block. Oh crap, I gotta clean all that up now. Yeah, how many of us have gone through that before? <laughs> Ask any quilter. Scraps are just a fact of, well, making quilts. No matter how hard you try to contain them, it's a never-ending phenomenon. They are like roaches, where you think you got rid of them, but somehow they multiplied. But fabrics are much cuter and much more welcome than roaches, even if they are bit-sized. Wouldn't you agree? So I know we all have them, and we all want to use them up in some creative way. So I figured, let's make a project together and use up those scraps, strings, and crumb pieces. So starting in January 2023, we'll do a monthly video creating blocks that use up scraps, strings, or crumbs. Now, I can't give you too many specific details about the project since I'm still kind of researching it and putting it together, but I can tell you that it will be one video a month and each block will be 12 and a half inches. So we are going big this time. And we'll be dealing with strings and crumb pieces, not just scrap fabric. From time to time, I may put in a bonus project 
just to give a bit of variety. Sounds exciting? I hope it does. Well, send me an email if you got questions or comments about it. The email address is in the description box below. Now remember, we'll start this in January 2023. So see you then. So make sure you save all your crumbs, your strings, and all those scraps, because we're going to start using them come January 2023. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't noticed, I do have a new friend here. No, oh, this, for those of you that don't know, this is a Martelli rotary cutter. Now this is the 45 millimeter rotary cutter. I do have the 60 and it's on the cutting table over there. I never had a 45 though. Usually in the videos you see me using this one. I would keep this next to this on the sewing machine just so I could actually trim blocks. The angle at which I have to use this, I mean, yeah, this for the wrist is not really good. So I ended up investing in a smaller 45 millimeter rotary cutter for from Martelli. I like this particular rotary cutter because it does, I mean, it's easier on your wrist and there's not much pressure on your whole hand. This is a good size for just trimming up blocks or just doing some basic cuts when you're at your sewing machine. But it kind of makes me wonder, what's everybody's favorite rotary cutter? This is mine. I like it again because there's no strain on your wrist and it's kind of easy and relaxing on your hand. It does take some getting used to because the grip is a little bit different. Unlike these things here, see if the camera focuses. This is from Ofa. And I do like this particular rotary cutter because it's very easy to take the blade out. You just basically pull down on this red trigger here. I'm not gonna do it now because I'm probably gonna cut myself if I do. Very easy to switch the blade. But again, these Martelli cutters, these are actually my favorite rotary cutters because they just fit in your hand so well, or there's no strain on any of your hands. And if you got problems with your wrist, such as arthritis, I would highly recommend one of these. And what's your favorite rotary cutter? Leave a comment down below. Let everybody know what you like about any particular brand of rotary cutters and what you don't like. Now, this is a right-handed one. They do make one for left-handed people, that's usually a blue handle here. The one thing I don't like about these rotary cutters, yeah, you can't really switch hands with it. You can do that with one of these though. Sometimes I do cut with my left hand if I don't wanna turn the whole block around or I just wanna do like a little trim, a quick trim, I'll switch to my left hand and just trim that little piece off. Can't do that with this, you gotta actually turn your whole block and then you can trim it, even if it's that little piece. Or just go old fashioned and grab your scissors. But what's your favorite rotary cutter? We may have asked this question in a previous video, but there's now a lot of new, newer subscribers. So let's ask the question again. What is your favorite rotary cutter? Leave a comment down below. Let everybody know what your favorite rotary cutter is and why do you like it? So I think I got all 10 of my blocks sewn. So let's have a one last look and we'll call this block done. Whoops, forgot to take care of one bit of business. Now remember in block three, when we did the stocking, I presented a challenge to all of you. I wanted you to come up with your own particular design. And boy, there was some pretty darn creative ones, but there was one particular design that kind of caught my eye and I'm gonna present them with this jelly roll strip. So congratulations. I'll be reaching out to you via Facebook Messenger. 
Congratulations, you won this jelly roll. We did all five blocks, well, six if you count the bonus block. The original quilt design only called for 25 blocks, but if you did the additional block, you'll have 30 blocks altogether, which would actually make a pretty decent row size quilt. Now it's time to get all the blocks out, get them up on your design wall, and start playing with the layout. That's what I'll be doing in the next couple of days. Now some of you have asked, well, can we see my finished quilt? I'll probably put a video out when I get them done, but give me some time because now I got three of them to actually do and possibly one more. So I'll be busy in the next couple of weeks. Be very, very busy. Well, until next time, you know what I'm gonna say because I always say this at the end of every video. Let's go out and create something.